My name is LaRonda Palmer. I teach uh, the Emergency Medical Responder Program and also Essentials to Healthcare. I am also a paramedic and work with Grady EMS. I was uh, called by my colleague, Milani Smith, and said that there was another physician here at the school and asked me if I was interested in the position. Uh, so prior to that, she uh, called and asked me to come in and uh, certify the kids in CPR. At that time, I was a uh, CPR instructor. So we all came in and I uh, certified the kids in CPR. And um, I loved it. I loved working with the kids. I loved the personality that the kids had. And so she told me about the position and I applied. And two days later, I was hired. My name is Milani Smith, and I teach Emergency Medical Responder and Intro to Healthcare Science. In our pathway, we have two pathways at our school, Emergency Medicine and um, Sports Medicine. In um, Emergency Medicine, our students can obtain an EMR certification, which is Emergency Medical Responder. It is the first level in EMS, and so it is the first responder basically on any call. Typically, all firefighters in uh, the state of Georgia are at least EMR certified, most of them are ENTs. And so this gives the students opportunity to, when they graduate, they can go work on an ambulance or they can work in dispatch or logistics. And we have kind of a very good relationship with Grady and they have offered some of our students positions when they pass the test after they graduate. My name is Linda Perez and I'm in the 12th grade. My name is Sylvia Freeman and I'm in the 12th grade. My name is Brianna Lucky and I'm in the 12th grade. For the mock disaster program, we had to act as a patient. So let's say I had a concussion. I wouldn't be able to speak. I wouldn't be able to like tell the nurses what were wrong with me so they would have to figure out for themselves. I am Dr. Courtney Akery. I teach Introduction to Healthcare Science and I also teach Sports Medicine. I teach on a college level, I teach Human Anatomy and Physiology, which is basically what I teach the college students. They have to learn the, I'm sorry, the high school students. They have to learn the anatomy before they can do any hands-on with the sports medicine. So it's kind of draining for them, but they understand that if I don't know the anatomy, we won't be able to do any practical or hands-on skills. So with that being said, I've been teaching this for seven years, all, all total, all together. They get certified through Project Team Save, which is a program through Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, in which they certify the teachers in the community in all of the schools. Uh, because of course, you know that emergencies happen, you don't understand what's going on, you may have a kid that goes into cardiac arrest, and early intervention is having the teachers understand what's going on and what those signs are, and attempt the uh, cardiac arrest. What I want to do once I leave high school is that I want to become a neuroscientist. So basically this goes with my field. CTAE is Career Technical Agricultural Education. And to me, it's basically getting the high school students college and career ready. That's what it's all about. You teach them about the academics, but you also teach them about what happens after the academic world. How can you use those academics and get them a skill which will lead them into have, being employed? So we do a lot in employability skills because we think a lot of that is common sense. Employ being employable, but to them they don't understand. The way they talk, the way they sound, the way they dress, how they present themselves is really, really, really important. So we like to tell students, you are seen before you're even heard. So you have to present yourself in a certain way before you even, before anybody knows your name. So that's, that's mostly what it means to me. Our students typically do um, participate in mock disasters. Um, so Grady and other big healthcare systems have to do these mock kind of large scale practice runs, so to speak, in case something, a mass casualty does happen. And what our students do is they serve as the victims in most instances. And so they are the patients and they are acting as though they're injured. And I think we had about 30 students participate this last mock disaster and they did very well. I liked it. It was great to see like how you get rushed in from the ambulance and you have to go in, see all the people, all the commotion going on around you as the nurses are rushing to see every patient in a certain amount of time. It's great because it teaches you how to get there, how to work out personal situations, how to work out business situations just to get along with peers. So we have a program called Reach One, Each One. It's a program through Grady in Morehouse um, College 
in which our students shadow a doctor uh, every Thursday and they actually go in and different departments. So some of our students will go in surgery, some of them will go in our OB, sickle cell, um, different surgeries throughout the, the hospital in which they will shadow a doctor and they'll actually be in the room and actually see a full surgery go through. And that is another program where our students actually were able to realize that I didn't want to be a doctor. We had our student last year who was a valedictorian and when she got through the program she was like, I don't want to be a doctor anymore. She wants to go to school for accounting. So sometimes it makes the students understand that this is something that I want to do and then sometimes it's like, mm, I don't want to do that because I don't like blood. So I think that this just, it, it opens their eyes to see exactly what they want to do as far as their future. You have programs such as the Health Career Academy is sponsored by Emory, Morehouse, and Aetna. And that is a pipeline program where we nominate students to be in it in their 10th grade year. And then a lot of professionals come in from the field, exercise physiologists, pharmacists, medical doctors, and um, paramedics, EMTs, they come to the school and they actually follow the students from their 10th, 11th, and 12th grade year. And then they're also partner with college students who are they have physician assistants, backgrounds, all type of backgrounds, and they follow them up until their 12th grade year. We also have another program called EPIC, and that's through Emory. It's called the Emory Pipeline Collaborative Program, and that starts where it's a smaller group of students. So the Health Career Academy is about 20 students. The EPIC program has five, and they follow them from their 10th, 11th grade year, and that includes a summer program, and they get paid to go to school for that. So it's really big in trying to get students to enter in the health careers, and they target students like ours who are very, very good at practical skills, and they may need a little help in the academic portion because they're not exposed to these things. In HOSA, competition was the best experience I've had because you get to see all the schools come together and work on something that we all have the same passion for which is health science. It's a great program where you get a lot of information because when we go to the leadership programs, there's different um, there's different topics that everybody talks about. So at the same time you're competing, but at the same time you're learning about more about other fields that you didn't know about. A major challenge is equipment. Um, it's The equipment is expensive. And to have the proper equipment, oxygen tanks and mannequins and stretchers, that costs a lot of money in the tens of thousands. And our department does a good job of budgeting, giving each school what it needs, but it's difficult when a lot of these resources run out and we need to replace them you know, every so often. We would love to have an ambulance so our kids could get in the back and actually see what it's like to, to be able to work on a call and run a call and get their equipment and mannequins and stuff like that. I think being at Carver does give us an advantage because we have teachers that are certified in the fields that we want to go in as future health and science career.